Uh, good evening, and thank you for tuning in to Unboxing New Music. My name is Boon Hua, and the concept of the show is to introduce and have a conversation with some of the finest composers and performers based in Singapore and Asia on contemporary music. Each episode will feature two or three works that we will listen to together with the score, and I hope you will find something interesting about how the score looks in relation to the music. The live component of the show allows for real-time audience interaction, so I encourage our audience to let us know that you are there and are excited about this show by saying hello and sharing some thoughts or asking questions. So without further ado, I'd like to bring in our guests for tonight. Uh, he has a formidable presence in Singapore, currently the principal conductor of Ding Yi Music Company, resident conductor of Singapore Chinese Orchestra and music director of Singapore National Youth Chinese Orchestra, I'm not finished yet. Lecturer at NAFA, Music Director of the Singapore Management University Chinese Orchestra and Artistic Director of Purple Symphony. Wow, that's, that's a really impressive CV. <laughs> he has a lot of exciting upcoming projects that will be online soon, so please keep your eyes peeled for that. And please welcome uh, our guest tonight, uh, Mr. Kwek Ling Kiong. Hello, everyone. Hi, thanks. Um, uh... Bunhua for for inviting me and thank you to to be able to uh, sh come into this platform to 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 share some of the new music that we perform. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've I've heard of you since when I was in Cat High, uh, as in my secondary <laughs> school, and I think that was your You're first. Disclosing my my age is it? <laughs> <laughs> and disclosing mine too. And I think that was was that. If please correct me if I'm wrong. That's one of your first few. Conducting engagements. Uh... Oh, you mean Cat High? Uh, uh, the the yeah yeah. I, I actually uh, uh, started that orchestra. Yeah. In yeah. Cat High Second, yeah. So when you started, I was I was there also. So that also oh, gave okay. you know, with okay. my age, and uh, and I, when I ask people about you know guests that I can I should interview for this show, I mean your name comes out a lot, and you know you have been so ins uh, oh. inspirational to many. Uh, young musicians in Singapore. So uh, really, really happy to have you here tonight. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and um, maybe, maybe you can just tell us a little bit about yourself. Mm. How how you switch uh, to conducting? Because previously, I believe you were a, a percussion. Uh, percussionist. Yes. Yes. Mm. Uh, how did you? I, I, how did I switch? Um. Um. I. I. My. First formal study in uh, music uh, was in Shanghai Conservatory of Music uh, in China. Uh, that's where I, I uh, learned my percussion and did my bachelor uh, degree in percussion. Um, then um, at the time when I returned to Singapore, I joined the Singapore Chinese Orchestra uh, as the principal percussionist. Uh, and since after I continued to play in the orchestra and uh, in 2004, I think, 2004, I was selected by uh, uh, the current music director, uh, Maestro Song Ye, as one of the first, uh, uh, at that time, there was a mentorship program called uh, Conducting Assistant, uh, which is a mentor uh, mentorship for, for, for young conductor. So, uh, uh, Maestro, uh, I'm, I'm very humble and very, very, very uh, proud you know, to, be, to be one of the uh, the trainers, trainees, uh, and 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 of course, my conducting experience started earlier uh, when, like most of most of us, uh, uh, most of all the the practitioner here in Singapore, uh, we teach our, our our main instrument, and and sometime when we got into uh, even deeper into the uh, uh, the the so called the teaching, uh, we start to conduct uh, orchestra, the school orchestra. So uh, I started to conduct uh, uh, secondary school, primary school, university, JC, all, all, all levels, even poly, um, Chinese orchestra. And that's where I, I, I thought uh, maybe I should go and you know, seriously think about uh, switching path and, and get a more uh, uh, study, uh, uh, well, you know, a proper training in, in uh, conducting. So that's where the planning of uh, switching the path to conducting, hmm. and the other part is uh, I I I like to share music to more more people, and 
of course, playing a percussion or, or, uh, is, 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 is also possible. Uh, but I look at conductor like a, like, a, like a film director, you know, so I can have more uh, opportunity and more, more uh, channels to, 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 to create productions and, and share my uh, thoughts and uh, artistic ideas into, into programs uh, that I can conduct myself or I can program and let people conduct. So that's another uh, uh, thought of how I want to switch uh, to conducting. Yeah. And uh, so you mentioned you studied percussion in uh, in Shanghai. Is it like Chinese orchestra percussion or Western percussion, or there is no? It's just percussion, kind of one. Uh, essentially, essentially, I I'm under the I was under the Chinese uh, music uh, faculty, mm. so called. Uh, but I took up another uh, uh, major subject with the Western percussion professor uh -huh. there. Yeah, so so uh, I did both la, Chinese and Western. Yeah. And then, uh, how come you choose to go to Zurich to study conducting uh, uh, under Johannes Schleffi? Oh, you have. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I I started to. Uh, attend um, different master classes uh, mm. in, in different different uh, countries, different places, under different maestros. And then I met uh, Maestro Song Ye, uh, who was actually uh, conducting a master class in Czech Republic mm. in those years. Uh, I think the name of the course is uh, Practical Conducting. Yeah. Um, and there were three, three um, mentors, and, and one of them is Johanna Slefli. So I oh, met him okay. there, and I I I felt uh, there's a um, connection. I feel I I, I feel uh, li I like his 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 teaching, and and that time um, my show Song Ye was a uh, guest conducting in Singapore, and I I attended that con that that course uh, during his guest conduct that that same year, so then two o four that was about two o o maybe then 2004 he became our music director for SEO and and then I started to uh, conduct the SEO as a train trainee uh, as a mm -hmm. uh, under the mentorship program and um, when I decided to take a sabbatical to study I, I actually uh, uh, um, uh, applied for a different school so there were there were two schools offered that was one the Bard College if you know uh, upstate New York, right? Uh, Bart College. Yeah, oh, Bart College. And yeah, Bart College, yeah. So there was one program there, master program. Then the other one was uh, Zurich, yeah, Hochschule, Music, music Hochschule. Mm -hmm. So, so and I, like I say, I, I like uh, uh, Shalafi's teaching. And and I think Zurich is in, in like, is surrounded by different European country where you go to the, you know, can be the French speaking region and then you have the German and then you have the Italian. So it's, it's very uh, easy to go to different uh, cities and, and of Europe. Uh, and that's mm -hmm. where the, the uh, classical music uh, mm -hmm. was born. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I picked Zurich in the end. And how, how was the, so I guess with, uh, with Johannes, you studied mostly Western repertoire and, and did that, um, give you more, you know, kind of weapons in your arsenal to deal with the music that you're dealing with in Singapore? Well, definitely, definitely. That's a, a, actually a very important uh, uh, training for the foundation or for conducting. Um, and not only, uh, you know, the classic, classical music, I mean, in, in terms of the period, uh, the romantic, uh, the classical, uh, but also contemporary music, yeah. And we we have also uh, in the Zurich course, I we had the uh, opportunity to conduct a professional orchestra. So we will go to uh, Prague and uh, various city of Czech Republic, Kromuzi uh, and and all these smaller town where they have professional orchestra. And then we 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 actually engage them, and we have a five day course, and each of us will share some 
movement of some symphonies mm-hmm. and, and at the end of the course it become a, it, it is a ticketed uh, concert so it's a very mm-hmm. good training in a way that you actually uh, really learn how to handle professional uh, musician in a way how to communicate not only conduct a uh, live or, uh, orchestra uh, it's really a, a very uh, like like a kind of on job training kind of thing yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, for for the listeners, um, I mean, Johannes Schleffi is a is a really a very very big name, especially now. Um, all the young yes. conductors that of my generation, they all flock to Zurich to study with him. I mean, I jokingly call him the kingmaker because like all his students are winning all the big jobs in in the industry now, and I know they still do a, a, this training where they go to Czech Republic or Bulgaria and they have an orchestra work to work with for one mm. week and mm. present a concert. And uh, all his students, you know, they speak so highly of him. I met him twice and uh, yeah, oh, really okay. blown away um, from his teaching and just his, his ego sharp eyes about catching, you know, little things. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, so maybe from... Uh, from that, we can kind of pivot into today's topic, which is the uh, the repertoire, the new music repertoire for the Chinese Chamber Ensemble. And mm. what I understood in my research is that the Chinese Chamber Ensemble is is always been around in um, in China's history. Uh, but maybe you can tell us a little bit about you know uh, what are some common instrumentations, for example, um, and what are some of their functions over you know history. What have you found out, actually? Wow, I found... I'm curious too. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, like the uh, Jiangnan Si Zhu. Uh, okay. And also, um, kind of the, the characteristic is more... Everybody is playing the same melody, but it's different instruments. And so it's a very different concept of kind of the SATB from um, oh. the Western. And, and this is really a shout out to... Um, to Chen Wei's book. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. So, um, yeah, I'm just wondering what, because uh, I'm curious about what kind of instrument, because I see different pieces and they use different instrumentation. So I'm just thinking from a Western perspective, for example, the string quartet, there's a woodwind quintet, there's a brass quintet, there's something more uh, generic. Is there something like that also in the Chinese chamber ensembles? I think if if you uh, you you know the the moment you share that you you think Jiang Na Si Zhu is categorized, I mean for the for the uh, viewers who are listening, uh, uh, literally translated into English would be the silk and bamboo music. Mm-hmm. They, that's that's mostly the, how they translate yeah Jiang Na Si Zhu. So is uh, this this ensemble will be uh, mainly using the bow string, the plug string, and and the and the flute. Or, or the bamboo flute, or even the uh, we call it the mouth organ, yeah, the sheng, uh, mm-hmm. which is also uh, you know part of it. The body is also made from bamboo, and hence you know it's called si zhu, which is uh, bamboo and 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 string, uh, thread, uh, mm-hmm. and silk. silk. Um, then 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 uh, if you would do have share the same concept um, that's how we call it chinese chamber ensemble um, in fact the direct translation is actually just small ensemble it, 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 the, 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 the chinese musicology didn't have this chamber uh, ensemble yeah the name this is the, the name western is actually quite western import, right? yes, yeah. yes 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 correct, it's uh, correct, correct. Yue, right mm, this. correct yeah, of course. If you talk about very you know longer history in terms of the 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 uh, ancient time, the ancient music, and uh, there is a term called Fang Zhong Yue, Fang Zhong Yue means in, which is actually chamber music in a room within a room. Yeah, uh, but the, the concept is very different. That one is more on the on 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 the zither, the 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 gu qing, Yeah, which is. Uh, not really a, a, a like a like a duet or trio or a, a quartet. This this sort of uh, concept. So another another uh, uh, way to 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 put this Chinese chamber music is is actually is is quite. Uh, if you look look into some book some books of uh, music Chinese music called uh, musicology, then you will find is quite. Uh, 
regional, yeah, categorized mm -hmm. under regional. So you have Jiangnan Sichu is mainly on the southern part of China, which is uh, Shanghai and uh, Zhejiang you know, province. And then you have um, uh, within the, the Guangdong area, uh, then you have this Cantonese folk uh, music, and they have mm -hmm. a form of ensemble called Wu Jia Tou, which is literally mm -hmm. a quint quintet, Wu, so it's a five. So mm -hmm. these five instruments, uh, they, are, they, are, they, set, they share some similarity with the bamboo, silk and bamboo ensemble, the Jiang Nan Si Zhu. Um, then you, you go to uh, another neighbor uh, next to Guangdong, the Chaozhou, then you have a Chaozhou Xuan Si. So that one is another form of ensemble, uh, almost the same kind of setting, but using different, uh, different instrument. Um, mm -hmm. I would say it's actually the same. It's also bow string, plug string, uh, but it has a unique character of, of that area. Yeah, mm -hmm. and this has very much uh, to do with the dialect itself. So it's how mm -hmm. it's it's really like how a Cantonese would speak, the pitch, you know, basically the tone, the tone, yeah, and how the Teochew sound and that bow string, the still a two string fiddle, in 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 the Shanghai, uh, for the Jiangnan Sichu. And then there's a two string fiddle in the Guangdong for the Cantonese music and the two string fiddle for the Tiu Tiu music. They are all Hu Qing. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. just called different Hu Qing, Gao Hu, Er Hu, Nan Hu, or uh, uh, Guangxian, or, 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 you know, a different kind of name. But it's actually a same two string, you know. So if, if we go back to our Western, so violin is started, didn't, didn't start off as a violin, right? So it has a folk. Uh, is is his folk musical instrument, so how he evolved into this. So um, then, this is more mainly on the string part. Then, if you talk about chamber in the in terms of the size, uh, chamber ensemble for the Chinese one, uh, there's one actually uh, important is uh, the the we call it the uh, wind and percussion, mm -hmm. uh, but it's mainly on outdoor. Uh, so it's not in in a chamber inside a chamber. But because uh -huh. of the size, it's all, we call it a small ensemble. Yeah, so it's like xiao he zhou cui da. So cui da yue means the, the wind. And then, and then this will be more on the, the northern part of China. Yeah, mm. so this is how later part of, of, of how a Chinese orchestra is formed because we, the, 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 the master who's, who has this, uh, well, one of the big names is there are many people who try out the formation of this orchestra, Chinese orchestra, what we see now. But one of the big names is Peng Xiu Wen, this mm -hmm. com conductor and con composer himself. So he uh, borrowed the idea of symphonic orchestra from the West. But where to find the instrument? He will gather all this small ensemble, or what we call now the Chinese chamber, ensemble, and then pick the most important one from the, each, each ensemble and then form this orchestra. Uh -huh. So you have sona, which is actually from a, a, a wind and percussion ensemble. And then you have the tizi, could be also from the wind and percussion and also from the jiangnan zi zhu. You know, or then you have the hu qing from the different various, the gao hu, uh, is from the Cantonese uh, folk music ensemble. So, so this is the Chinese uh, ensemble uh, concept. But now what we say, uh, what we call Chinese chamber music, Chinese chamber music, actually, is very different. Hmm. Yeah, it has no it has no fixed formation in terms of musical instruments. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's it's I would say it's still evolving, but I also say it maybe it's just this is how it's going to be. Yeah, you know, it's like a new music ensemble. You just form, and then whatever instrument you have, you just form it, and then they just compose and the ensemble can play together for a long time and they will go go on. Yeah, so that's how I see. Yeah, people see. have been trying to think about uh, maybe to replicate or to try to, uh, you know, create something like, uh, for example, the closer one would be uh, um, the Western string uh, quintet or string quartet, you know. Mm -hmm. So we have Hu Qing Quartet, for example. I see, yeah. okay. So they borrow the concept, borrow the concept. And, but, um, I don't think it really uh, has developed fully 
in terms of there are not many group they are doing people are doing trying still trying mm. they are hooching ensemble um, but you talk about quartet and there's not a very strong group that's fixed but see, interestingly Singapore I think we have a few group hopefully uh-huh. may, maybe in future it will come from Singapore yes that would be very exciting um, so would you say over the years uh, there is also kind of western influence on the the Chinese chamber on Zombo um, definitely, definitely. Because mm-hmm. if you talk about, uh, uh, I mean, the, the playing ensemble, one of the important part is not only musician come together, but it's also you need you need repertoires, right? Mm-hmm. So so and and repertoire come from some some we evolve from the musician himself, but now we have composer, yeah. And you you are a comp, you you also study comp, I mean composition. There is no. Of course, now in China, we have specific like one, uh, maybe one subject or one course. Some of the countries say, oh, this is Chinese composition. Mm-hmm. For example. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I mean, you tell me, you know, uh, is right? so yeah. it's just using what kind of, you know, and of course, then you have some specific uh, theory uh, that you have to learn for that specific. For example, you want to write for Japanese um, uh, you know, ensemble then you have to study the Japanese uh, not only the instrumentation you know but of course other aesthetic part the literature that is in, involved in that culture right absolutely yeah but in terms of technique composition technique I would say uh, the West technique is, is still very dominant in mm. most of the conservatory who which is which is creating a lot of composer who is writing for you know all different ensemble. And one of them is Chinese chamber. Yeah. yeah. So yes, yeah. Of course, inside Chinese chamber uh, works, there are a lot of influence from the West. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because as we mentioned earlier about how traditional ensembles mainly play one melody together, but a lot of these pieces these days, they have, you know, harmony and melody and, you know, counterpoint and all these things which are not uh, traditionally Chinese, I, I suppose. Yes, yes. So I guess this was a perfect, you know, segue into the first uh, piece for tonight, which is Guo Wenting's uh, Petals to Heaven. Because um, I've read that Guo Wenting is uh, obviously a, a very important Chinese uh, composer, but he's also one of the f- few Chinese composers who actually never left China. Uh, you know, exactly. all, the, all, all his other uh, peers, Chen Yi, uh, Tang Tun, uh, Chen Qigang, they all left China to go to US, to France, and they have mm-hmm. a you know, wonderful uh, uh career and following there but he just stayed in China and then he just wrote get, continue writing mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. so maybe before we listen to the piece could you just give us a short introduction about um, this piece Petals to Heaven um, I think it has uh, six movements if I'm not wrong uh, so I mean this this piece evolved in, uh, to commemorate the, the so called the death of the 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 uh, victims of the Sichuan uh, earthquake, uh, earthquake. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah. So, um, and this piece was very interesting for me. Is uh, when I first read read this this music and started to conduct. The more I go into it, I feel the the the, the emotion, the depth. Mm. But interestingly, if you look at the score. Is very simple. Yeah, Sim- I, I know what you're saying. In a way that is not, yeah, yeah. Later you can take a look. Yeah. Um, so that caught me into, you know, wow, this this composer has really, you know, some, to me, like in, the interesting thing is, is, is a lot of substance, very emotional. That's why people say he's one of the very um, hum, hum, humanic, and is it hum, humanist? Mm-hmm. Yeah. One, yeah, he really can create uh, uh, the sound. The kind of sound is is very. Uh, I wouldn't say Western, but it's it's not purely Chinese. But it's still there. Are still, uh, uh, you can still find some roots or, or traditional uh, uh, element inside his his work. I mean, in mm-hmm. terms of Chinese uh, uh, music, actually, in this space, you, know, you can find. At the later part of uh, one, I think one of the moments you can then realize, oh, he got this uh, element from a famous folk song. 
，彩花。啊、OK， 哎呀，哒哒哒哒滴哒滴哒 ，is actually a folk song, a Chinese folk song. But then before that, it was like hidden nowhere, and then、嗯、it's just a, yeah, kind of soundscape and and kind of emotional, you know, expression through his his uh uh different sonality kind of uh uh. I would say the the different petals of the sounds, yeah, yeah. tone colors, yeah. I I would love to just say the Chinese name of the piece because petals to heaven, it 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 lacks the,、yes. the beauty of the Chinese. The Chinese name is Piao Jing Tian Tang 的花朵 which translated、mm-hmm. to English is uh, it's petals that that float or that you know, that that there's a, there's an image when talk about you know Piao Jing Tian Tang 的花朵 this it's something moving, it's moving towards there. So maybe we should just listen to it.、Uh, just a quick thing. The first movement is called Zainan, which is、um, the disaster. And I think we'll listen to the first and the sixth movement. And the sixth movement is、uh, a ritual. So here we go. I'm gonna mute.
the I I find the um I I know the score is very small for the audience listening in, so you cannot really see very clearly. But at the end, when you have this mi re mi re mi re mi mi re mi, it says uh song jing, which means to to chant. And and I love how everything is displaced by one beat, and that really reminds me of like when you go to a temple, and then you're at the back of the temple, and you hear the the monk in front, you know, start chanting, and then by the time it gets to you, it's quite late already, and you know, so everybody's one beat behind. Yes, good <laughs> imagination. <laughs> and um, and you are you you pointed out something before. I mean. Uh, you know about Kovinchin that he is one of the you know they they, they have a they have a, 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 a nickname for them which is the Si Da Cai Zi yeah so mm -hmm. Tan Dun ah Chen Qi Gang ah Ye Xiao Gang so Kovinchin is one of them so Kovinchin is the only one that didn't go overseas so mm -hmm. he was all the while in China and uh, spent a, a little bit of time in in New York for a very short time mm -hmm. uh, but interestingly I think this is one of the point that you pointed out. Which is, uh, I don't know. I'm going to ask you. you know, so, so how do you find? Is he is his music Chinese Western? I think you can. Yeah. Uh, for for me, there are some techniques which I've, for example, like in the first movement, uh, where he used some repeated things. I, I remember seeing that a lot in the music of uh of Penderecki and Dudosowski, because I I've seen yes. those pieces when I was working in Poland, and he so there's. It's it's all in meter measured measured and then there's a section where it's not measured and everything mm. just kind of happens by itself and then eventually it comes to a a, a, a point together and then we move on a little bit more so there's li little snippets of that um, and also yes. like how the different instrumental groups they 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 come in to make a composite rhythm so it's ba ba beat but it's di to to it's three different yes. and that's I, I remember that's quite a western I cannot really pinpoint Correct. to what com uh, also, I think the use of intervals, you know, of um, minor seconds or uh, tritone or uh, major seventh, that's quite, because it, it really creates this tension, right? This like mm. crying out in the first movement about, mm. you know, f about things, of, uh, things are not right. It's like a scream for me, but that's what okay. I that so you... but, yeah, ex exactly, exactly. But that, why I'm throwing this question is that then, then you know, so he's the one that never traveled to the West to learn, you know, so called from the West in the day. Of course, he, so it's is 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 it's interesting that he's using some of those techniques. But at the same time, you can also find that there are a lot of uh, so like uh, a lot of unison, the melody, right? the octave, all the strings, they're playing there. So not so much as a vertical concept of or the Western uh, composition idea of harmonizing through a vertical, you know, but it's all a horizontal. But that creates its own tension in a way. And that's mm. very, uh, also from the traditional Chinese chamber ensemble concept of playing all in the same melody line. Maybe it's a more lyrical style, but, you know, he's using that he he actually pointed out that some of them is using a very you know, so-called orient, oriental uh, way approach of of, mm -hmm. of interpreting his music. Yeah. So just now you mentioned uh, the folk song. Is it the one that is used in the sixth movement? Yes. Is that yes, the folk song? Yes. Uh huh. Yes. Okay. I I have a and because some... and the folk song is actually from uh, Sichuan. Sichuan, because he's from Chongqing, yeah. right? Yeah, and and the the I mean the earthquake is happening in, in Sichuan. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there are some questions and some uh some comments that I, I left out earlier. Uh, mainly the hellos from Dedrick and uh Sun Pingyu, and uh and also Cheng Jin. Uh, she says. Oh, hello, hello. hello. <laughs> and uh and the doctor Go is also tuning in. That's very nice. Uh, Emily has a a, a question about um your thoughts about the blend of Western string instruments in the string section of the Chinese ensemble. Uh, so I guess maybe like the cello and the bass and how does it blend together with the, the, the Hu Qin? Uh, because she said during the bass and the Zhong Hu duet in the sixth movement in the Qi, uh, it was obvious that the instruments had very different performance practice. Mm. Uh, how, exactly. how, so it's like, yeah, it, 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 one, 
uh, Western and one Chinese, and uh, trying to blend together. Is it mainly? <laughs> is it mainly like there, a, there, there are two. There are two. I think. I think two aspect. One. I mean, uh, in 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 whole world, in the whole world now, you know, if you talk about Chinese orchestra, Chinese ensemble, uh, I mean, they are mainly. I would say maybe more than ninety percent or maybe 80%, I would say 90, yeah. They are still using cello and, and double basses mm -hmm. because there is still not a very good uh, uh, invention yeah. That, 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 that is covering the bass part because, and it's also coming from the traditional, so-called the conventional uh, Chinese chamber ensemble, all of, let it be the instruments, yeah. It's there, there's a lack of shortage of bass. Mm. Based instrument, yeah. In in all in all you know in, in the winds in the plug string in the in the in the bow string, yeah. And of course, the most uh, prominent orchestra that is using uh, so called a Chinese or more Oriental a base uh, routine, form right? of, yeah, which is kehu la, They call it the mm -hmm. or they call kehu. it now as is Hong Kong Chinese orchestra. The Hong Kong Chinese orchestra has actually, you know, and and also using a not. Not the not not the 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 snake python skin, but it's a synthetic skin. Yeah. Hmm. So so they use uh uh kehu or uh, ting kehu to uh to replace uh double basses and and Cello cellos. Base. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, maybe Emily is asking how 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 can it blend well or or I don't know what's the exact question. Actually. Um, uh she, she has a follow-up question about what is the current performance practice for contemporary music for Chinese ensembles. Mm. And maybe um, what, I'm, what I'm getting here is perhaps it is about their training because I would, I would imagine most bass and most cello players, they have their training in Western music instead of exactly. Chinese music. Mm. And so they bring a different set of ideas uh, as compared to the Hu Qing players who are learning Chinese music in their, in their mm -hmm. major... Yeah, that's kind of, uh, let me see, how much of traditional performance practice is applied when performers of Chinese instruments perform contemporary music? Can composers count on the musician's trained intuition or do we have to write everything down? Ah, okay. So I guess, um, I, I think I understand the, the question now um, because it's really about performance practice. So previously, when you mentioned some mm -hmm. of the traditional kind of ensembles, they have their, uh, they have their uh, unique way of doing things, unique way of doing ornamentation, unique way of doing this. And how much should the composer notate all those down? Or should you just trust that the, the performers will understand these kind of regional differences? I think, I think the clearer you have for your, on your score, right? And it will help and encourage the musician to perform. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then of course, even you have, you know, the most clear notation, they're bound to be, you know, and I mean, I mean human is human, right? So there's yeah. different interpretation and different practices, you know, around. And, you know, if it, even, even from a Chinese traditional, you know, there are different school, right? I mean, in the West also, right? Even from, even from the Western train, there are different school, there are different mentality. So mm. I think is 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 how you 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 want to build a relationship, you know, with the with the ensemble, with the orchestra, and how you you want your music to be presented. From a composer perspective, I will I will always always I mean come from a conductor perspective, I always encourage the composer to be as clear as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that means if now we have all the luxury of digital, you know, technology and all that, you know, we can use all this technology and we can communicate easily. You know, think about in the past, you know, you, you can't even meet, right? You send a score out and that's it. You have to trust that they are going to do and the conductor and in between the musician, they are also the conductor. So mm -hmm. I think uh, both, you know, you, you have to, it, it is you, it, nothing to lose to, to be very clear in your mm. notation and then and on top of that, the personal kind of uh, communication, you know, now you can do like, you know, face talk, you know, or yeah. FaceTime and all or that. Even send it's recordings. important. It's important. Mm. Yes. As, as well. Yeah. I think in the episode with uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Goto Chai, we talked about, you know, using uh, Fang Yan in his choral pieces. And then we talked mm. about how, how can we, um, you know, 
teach the choirs how to sing these because there, there is kind of the the you know uh, IPA which is this this kind of um, what's that phonetics that that people use to mm -hmm. teach in front of Italian or German but when it comes yes. to uh, Chinese languages like you know Hokkien, Teochew all those Cantonese it becomes very very difficult because there's still a lot of things that's not so possible um, and maybe uh, the best way is actually to send a recording of someone speaking or someone singing so then that becomes the the, the model uh, Kiong has a, a, a point about the suggestion, his suggestion, yeah, is to notate as clear as possible for Western instruments in Chinese orchestra, even all the ornaments, bowing, playing positions, um, as close to the Asian style, like imitated Mongolian um, uh, Qi, for example. Yeah, I, I really do think, um, because if if the intention is very clear to the performer and the performer understands, oh, okay, you want this style and I understand this style, I don't really have to do it because I know what you're talking about. And if you don't know this style, then it's so helpful to have, you know, all these directions, right? Yes, yes. I, I think it's two ways. Huh? So, you know, of course, there are composers who, because it's, it's, it's not easy. It's not all the compo especially when you talk about I don't think it's only Chinese music. I mean, it's more like a um, world music or you call it, I don't know, uh, ethnic. I, I, I'm not sure how you use the term, you know, uh -huh. but okay, let's say we talk about Chinese music now, right? So in terms of the, 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 the notation you know, or, or even, okay, maybe a good example. I think Chen Wei is around, right? Chen Wei is on, online also. It's Chen Wei. I am not sure. Hopefully, he's watching. But as case in point, also anyway, in the episode with anyway, Chen Wei. Mm -hmm. mm. So, so there's a like you know we use a, a Chinese dizi to play a Tamil song or Indian mm -hmm, song yeah. or raga, right? So he is very good in notation. Of how you know you use the fingering? You know all the all the ornament and all that. And when the musician just read and he understand all this standard notation and the you already got that 80 to 90 percent of mm. effect safely yeah so i think there are benefit of being very 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 precise and very clear yeah so then the less the, the less of the i mean the the rest of the 20 percent maybe is interpretation and how you're going to really uh, then there's a room for a second creation yeah mm. Uh, Molly has a very very good question about educational music for Chinese orchestra but maybe I, I would like to leave that to a little bit later so maybe we can just look at uh, Emily's piece first and then we can uh, talk about some of the questions and uh, Emily's piece is, is um, let me pull that out very quickly uh, maybe uh, you could tell us a little bit about uh, this piece Call resonate by Emily Cole and uh, the context of it because it's very interesting. It's for a Western wind quintet uh, together with uh, a Chinese chamber ensemble. So exactly like what we were mentioning earlier. Mm, yes. Uh, so we we uh, Ding Yi invited a group from from Finland, uh, a Western uh, wind quintet. So um, so we commissioned. Emily to, to, to compose the piece and she has this idea of uh, uh, um, I think she has tried been trying to use a lot of such influence in, in, his, in, 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 his, in her work you know about uh, the, the, the heritage of Singapore uh, especially in terms of language and the Teochew, Parakan um, and, and this become the Western and Eastern kind of mixture uh, fusion uh, instrumentation, but what mm. more important for me is, uh, you know, the 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 um, the interesting the interesting uh, uh, effect that he she tried to create through the different uh, instruments, and sometimes musician will also have to think, oh, what what is she trying to trying to get us to do, you know, some, some and then when we are going through that process, and then uh, new new. Maybe sometimes it's a new technique. Maybe sometimes it's a, a new idea, you know, or, or concept of a sound uh, that 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 uh, uh, develop from from mm. playing this piece. I think that is a more interesting 
uh, part of, of playing uh, new work for, mm. for us. Yeah. Mm. It's constantly finding out new possibilities and, and all yes, that. Yes, yes. And, and because... Mm-hmm. And, why we choose uh, because I know I know Emily quite quite uh, for for long because when she was in in uh, Diamond High School I was conducting the uh, I was conducting the Chinese orchestra there and and um, so uh, then after that she left and study and in the in the West you know so so being a Chinese a Singaporean Chinese uh, I think I believe she's a Teochew maybe mm. some yeah, she's dialect. yeah so 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 this is a perfect <laughs> chance you know because we are having a western wind uh, quintet with a chinese uh, ensemble and then mm-hmm. that that is already a mix of west and 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 we really like that i i mean i don't know i think the musician also like it and some of the audience actually uh, feedback that it's a very interesting sound because mm-hmm. uh, we can actually compromise each other uh, we can support each other because they mm-hmm. are in sound that you know we can have a horn to and horn is a very nice blend to, to bassoon horn and it works very well with the Chinese instrument, which we don't have that color. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's let's play this piece and then we can talk a little bit more about that after. So this is uh, Resonate by Emily Koh. Thank you. 
great. I, for, for me, I really, um, especially in the middle section where the Chinese instruments play, there is really a different of color, a different of taste. At the beginning, it was quite Western, and then in the middle with all the plucked strings, it has a different feel and different atmosphere to it. And then it really, it, you can really feel two different forces trying to come together and trying to find a common ground. Well, um, for for us, it's also a very good experience. Yeah, mm. uh, especially working with the the, the group. Uh, I mean, the idea of having to it's actually the second group that we we work with uh, from from overseas uh, with your instrument. The first one is uh, was a, a, a string string quintet. Yeah, from mm. Vietnam. Yeah. And then we also, uh, but that, that the concert was uh, conducted by Daryl Ang, yeah. Mm. So um, and then this uh, fin, uh, fin, uh, quintet from the Finland uh, is the second was the second uh, Western group that we invited. The idea is my idea is to have um, really good uh, uh, Western uh, uh, chamber group, uh, you know, to to work together with Ding Yi. So so as to help the musician to develop and, and improve also because I I also feel you know the idea of Chinese I mean chamber music ensemble yeah chamber mm -hmm. playing is is more uh, has more foundation and, and has more history and uh, from the Western uh, music in a training perspective in, in mm. terms of training and the idea of course in, in like what you say in the history of Chinese music we, all, we, we has always been this small ensemble, yeah, the Chang Nan Si Chu Guang Dong Yi, all that. Uh, mm -hmm. But the, diff, the concept is a bit different because even the repertoire, the, the idea of the composition is is different. So uh, we are very happy to have that that group. You know, they were really very uh, experienced, uh, and they can um, uh, show that you know not only the passion about playing you know new works, but it's really good in you know, playing in, in with very good. Technique and 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 uh, uh, musicality, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, uh, um, I mean, maybe for the audience who are maybe listening from outside Singapore, can you just tell us a little bit about Dingy Music Company and and um, you know, kind of the a, a journey, a, sh a short summary of the journey, <laughs> uh, just oh. so that everybody and knows uh, this this wonderful ensemble that you are leading. Dingy Music Company uh, from uh, I think this is our. 14 years, yeah. yeah. Then uh, it was a group of uh, graduates from NAFA, which is uh, Nanyang uh, Academy of Fine Arts, uh, and they studied mainly in Chinese uh, instrumental music. So uh, they want to form an ensemble to, to play uh, chamber music, and, and that's how it started, you know. And and we venture into a lot of experiment, which is good, and you know, we have no really clear idea uh, but but they were young la. I mean they are younger than much younger than me. So the the good point about young is you know, pass uh, you just there to to try out <laughs> anything. Yeah. So so we play traditional. We play you know so far in the mission we stayed and you know, we 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 bridge bridges between uh, contemporary and traditional. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so in terms of oh, not only the style of of, of repertoires but also uh, from from the the different uh, instruments. Uh, mixture uh, fusion um, so we two there are, there are a few uh, main event uh, uh, signature event I would say uh, the highlighted one is one of one of them is uh, the Chinese uh, chamber music festival mm -hmm. uh, which run uh, triennially and then we have another one is uh, a competition for Chinese chamber uh, work uh, mm -hmm. we call it composium meaning mm -hmm. a competition for composition and with symposium. So it's a mission yeah. of talks and, and, and workshops and also a com competition uh, presentation from the winners. And the, the first piece that you heard, uh, the, the, the titles from the, To The Heaven, was mm -hmm. actually uh, from a concert in 2018 under the Composium uh, um, Festival where we actually, first time we not only let the, the winners uh, perform a concert, but we also let the educators present their works. Yeah. yeah. So the educator actually was uh, playing, I mean, we played the, their works on, in the concert. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. 
And actually, uh, one of the winning pieces uh, by John Lin uh, called um, Reminiscence of Yuan Xiao, Ji Yuan Xiao, is, was also uh, a piece that we talked about when she was on this show. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, yes, uh, yes. almost yes. A, a few months ago. Uh, there's a, there's a, the, the comment section is really exploding. There's a lot of very, very interesting <laughs> uh, ideas. Um, but w one that I would like to just draw attention to, and uh, this is also by Emily, and she, she mentioned something uh, along those lines about, um, I mean, the reason why we're having this conversation is that sh sometimes she's afraid that she might, what she writes might go against the musician's intuition um, in terms of this kind of performance practice. So, um, for example, it's difficult to, as a composer to, and also sometimes as a conductor as well, when, when you're telling the ensemble to do something that you are not in the tradition of. Uh, for case in point, very very simple. Mm -hmm. I remember when mm -hmm. I was when mm -hmm. I was working in Poland and I was telling the the orchestra to play Chopin in a certain way because the soloist wants it, and I always feel like I, I it's not my place to do that, mm -hmm. even though I think it's probably right. Um, and so I, what do you have any um ideas to add? I think about... ultimately you have to do do. It's a kind of a uh, um for me. I mean, my personal uh, take is uh. Is 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 through you know really uh, being open uh, open enough to to share you know mm -hmm. uh, of course sometimes you know is is the the musician will say oh you know uh, you ask me to do I do you know simple as that <laughs> so, yeah but but even that it doesn't work right because it, 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 they 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 don't just don't play from that of course there are also a uh, situation where the the composer uh you know, didn't make sense, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the thought that they want, you know, it doesn't work. So I think it ultimately comes back to a very human kind of thing that, you know, should be sitting down or, or have a good talk about it, discuss and be open to, to hear from each other. I think mm. it's, it's very important that, uh, you know, sometimes we get score, we try, I mean, we, our musicians are very open to try all new things, you know. Uh, but some point, you know, we, we, we have to see, you know, because some of the composers are, are just beginning learning. Of course, I'm, I'm not saying it's not, you know, it's not, but I'm just, you know, some of the thoughts or some of the notations, sometimes it could be a problem uh, yeah. that we have to uh, sit down and open up and discuss, you know, and, mm -hmm. but at, in, in all in all, I think musicians are generally quite, quite open, at least from, yeah. from, from the, music company yeah we welcome <laughs> all new new music you know as long it it is it is uh, open for discussion yeah and it's not say mm. that I, oh i really have to do this the new but sometimes it, it, because we are not all perfect we are not master of all right yeah mm -hmm. I think you touch a beautiful point about that's why it's so wonderful doing contemporary pieces when the composer is there because it's it's all conversation and the best conversation happens during the break right when you are rehearsing a new piece and then the break comes yes, yes. and then where the composer goes up to each musician and say hey can you try this this way or how about this and that and and that conversation yes. then leads to revision of the piece we make it better and better uh yeah, yeah. You know, you know, I, 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 just one last one point, maybe if it's some small time, you know, we have an experience with Guo Wenjing. You know, mm -hmm. we have been Please. looking, searching, invite, trying to invite him for like we waited for three years, and uh -huh. the moment I met him in one of the uh, 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 event in Hong Kong, I, I, you know, get her, get his wife, which is my uh, old classmate, <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> to quickly, you know, say, hey, tell your, tell your husband that we are going to invite him. And they say, yes, 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 okay. So finally we got him. And then why I say this, 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 this story, that the first rehearsal we had to play his piece, Petals to the Heaven, mm -hmm. you know, the, the <laughs> comment that he gave is, you are terrible. <laughs> it's like, you're shocked. You are like dead, you know. Then we work, we work, we work. And after the concert, he said, hey, you know, this is the best rendition I ever heard about on my work. <laughs> and after after long time, he went back and then suddenly I got his WeChat you know, text and he said, can you send me the thingy recording? I want to share it in my class to the student in wow. Beijing. So, you know, it's that kind of, you know, support and so But I think you have to really, but you have to talk to the composer. You know, Why? What, what, what do you think is not working? You know, and then we have to be open and I think it's, it's, it's a communication. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at the comments, uh, Dr. Goh has a very good 
uh, maybe a question or a request and he was saying perhaps the Yi company can make the full scores of some of the pieces that you guys have done available for young composers to study uh, so they, they can look at new works written for Chinese instruments, of course with the permission of the composer, because this resource will be very helpful uh, for those who want to compose for Chinese instrument or sound recordings uh, are super helpful too. And you know, as much as I think um, a Chen Wei's book, again, a plug for Chen Wei's, uh, <laughs> the Teng Guide to Chinese Orchestra, is really fantastic, very, very detailed, but nothing beats studying scores, right? You look at how the score, uh, how, the, how the composers make decisions. I mean, those are, the, those are the best ways to understand how something is being put together. Um, and Chen Wei is very kind to say, you know, if. If anybody wants to look at his score, they're, they're welcome to get in touch with him. Um, Cheng Jin also agrees with uh, Dr. Go about um, there are many great pieces out there for the young, that the younger generation might not know and it would be really great to have a platform to view or purchase these. So coming back to this, when I was looking up uh, Go Wenjing, I know he's, he's uh, being published by uh, Recordi but I couldn't yeah. find his Chinese pieces. And I was just oh. going to ask you, what platforms are there available, you know, to look for these kind of pieces, uh, specifically for Chinese chamber music? Yeah, it's, it's challenging. It's challenging. Mm. Uh, uh, they, are, they are better now. You, you can find some of the publish, pub, uh, in, uh, publisher in, in China. Uh, basically, the Renmin Yue, you know, different one, the Beijing Renmin Yue, Shanghai Renmin Yue. So, mm -hmm. some of the uh, composers are being published. Uh, and maybe, you know, if you uh, also the conservatory, maybe the, the, the news, uh, I wouldn't say newsletter, maybe they have some publication. Each conservatory, they also have some publication. Mm -hmm. But the more, most direct one is go to the composer. Yeah, so okay. because it's, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's the practice. Um, and to add on to that, if, if, if anybody who is on, on, online, online, because I, I can't see the comments. Uh, and uh, uh, there, are, there are people like, like Chen, Jing, uh, Chen Jing actually wrote to me a few days ago and then another uh, young young uh, composer also uh, say, oh, I heard thing is this, this is, I, I cannot have the call. I say, you know, uh, you, I will introduce, I will link you up with the composer. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so if anybody that are yeah, interested, you know, you can, you can write to, write to us, you know, we will try our best to connect. Yeah. For now. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the idea of having publishing, uh, like Dr. Go has suggested, we have a thought of, you know, like composition should come up with some uh, uh, score, you know, CDs and all that, you know, ultimately you go to funding. Uh, we have to find funding. <laughs> of course. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it takes, it takes money to record these pieces and to have them on uh, a platform that everybody can um, can can benefit from. Uh, wow, I mean, that it's it's almost uh, an hour and fifteen minutes already, <laughs> and uh, and this I know we can still talk so much. It's still so much more about Chinese chamber music and about um, other things. Uh, maybe just kind of to to wrap up tonight's conversation. Um, uh, maybe you want to tell us maybe some upcoming projects that Ding Yi uh, has or some other of your personal upcoming projects that uh, the audience can listen to and uh, where can they find? Um, Ding Yi, okay. we, are, we, are, we are currently, uh, we, we, they just did an a audio book recording for, for education, uh, children mm -hmm. education, uh, on the paper story with uh, a newly composed uh, music by Pan Kok uh, and it's going to be a, a, a on the, I think it's a collaboration be between Ding Yi and uh, Esplanade under mm -hmm. the FI uh, Feed Your Imagination program. Um, yes. And we have our uh, uh, season, uh, unfortunately we can't really uh, confirm that we are going to carry on but uh, some of the concert has been uh, uh, already confirmed to be postponed to next year. Uh, mm -hmm. Then we'll carry out uh, some are very traditional uh, ensemble pieces. If you really want to study the really ensemble, then maybe January, you know, next year January 13, there's one concert. Yeah, it's really the, the about the oldies of Chinese chamber music. Yeah. Then the new music actually we had a, a very good uh, uh, program in, in supposed to be in, in September. Uh, mm. It's called Tuning in Two Old Two, and it's all featuring all uh, female composer, contemporary work, 
uh, we have local composer and uh, Chen Jing is one of them and uh, uh, Joyce Cole, Dr. Joyce Cole and and uh, I think Leong Ki In also mm-hmm. is Leong Ki In and uh, currently we are still waiting whether this will be going on uh, online or this can be postponed because it's a uh, you know the uncertain situation now. Absolutely. Yeah. And other than that, there are there are there are many other uh, uh, program we are doing uh, to 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 well part of uh, improving the appreciation of what is ch- Chinese chamber music or even the instrumentation. Yep. You know, so we are doing uh, plans. We are we're having plans to to make uh, digital uh, content uh, mm. on these areas. Yeah. Mm. I mean, if if and for uh, myself, odd... yeah, mm-hmm. for myself, so, sorry, for myself is uh, uh, the, uh, like I share with you, uh, SEO is also starting started uh, rehearsal. So SEO, uh, tomorrow I'm doing a filming uh, with the ensemble of twenty two, uh, because of restriction of the thirty packs, uh, yeah, uh, musician. So we're doing something for the national day, yeah, but mm. it's it's not going to be a national day song uh, program. <laughs> there are quite a fair bit of uh. Uh, well written ensemble pieces, Chinese chamber music, yeah, as well. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Uh, I was going to say if if the audience haven't yet subscribed to the Ding Yi Music Company YouTube channel, please do because they they post uh, full concerts and a lot of you know mm-hmm. fantastic stuff has been there. And you know the the social media game from Ding Yi is really top, <laughs> really fantastic, uh, really really excellent, and and also SEO as well. You know the the all these initiatives that has, that has been taking place during the COVID nineteen. Uh, uh, is really you know excellent, um, great. So, you know the the comment section is still you know going on with a lot of very very good questions. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, <laughs> this is this is really great. But unfortunately, I think we are end, we are close to the end of today's episode. Uh, we will try to you know look in the comment section and and it's 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 really wonderful to have composers you know having a, a discourse about you know notation and this kind of thing. Mm. And that's that's what I hope this this program can lead to. More discussion, more collaboration between colleagues. And that's something that's really wonderful. Dedrick, yes. uh, who is the general manager and also the assistant conductor, uh, put in a quick plug. Please find us on Thingy Music on Facebook, uh, mm-hmm. Instagram or YouTube. <laughs> Thank you. Great. So so uh so Mr. Kwek Kim Kyung, it's really, really wonderful. And, and you know, we had such a nice uh, coffee before the COVID situation hit. I think, was it February or March? And oh, uh, I yeah. hope, yeah, I hope yeah, we can. Yeah, correct, correct. We can sit down we'll again. Up, we'll meet up soon, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, with that, uh, thank you everybody for tuning in. And uh, please join us next week uh, where I'll be speaking to uh, Max Reefer, a percussionist based in Malaysia, to talk about his experiences in uh, various new music scenes in uh, Southeast Asia, you know, particularly Philippines and Indonesia. So that would be very, very exciting. So uh, once again, thank you, uh, Yin Kiong. And uh, see thank everybody. You. My big pleasure. <laughs> Bye-bye and good night. Good night.